So what is up guys, Sue to the Savage back and I am here with NFL Week, Taysom Hill, Michael Vick, Ben Roethlisberger, John Elway, that's about all the sevens I can name, but this is NFL Week 7 predictions and once again, a lot of predictions to get to and if you're just here to see a certain matchup, uh, timestamps are in the description below. Make sure you check that out. And uh, anyways, in terms of last week, I did all right. You know, got a couple of big upsets. Got a couple of the good picks, like saying 49ers over Rams, but had some bad ones, like saying Steelers over Brown, like Browns over Steelers. Steelers won. But anyways, none of that matters. It's a new week, new time. So without further ado, let's get this video started. And now you have our very first matchup, the Thursday night football matchup between the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, dear God. Like, either one of these teams could lead the division after this game. That is a terrifying statement, and it is just so bad. Like, literally, the NFC East should not exist. It, it, No one should win the division. No one deserves to make the playoffs unless one of these teams just goes on a tear for the rest of the season. Anyways, starting out with the Giants. Last week, you came out with your first victory over the Washington football team. You know, it wasn't that great a victory. Daniel Jones went 112 had 112 yards, one touchdown, one pick, but he didn't fumble, so that's a positive. In terms of rushing, uh, he led with 74 rushing yards, followed by Devontae Freeman with 61. Uh, in terms of receiving, Darius Slayton was the big man with 41 yards and a touchdown. And that was pretty much it. Uh, you know, your defense it did all right for a little bit. You know, you're facing Kyle Allen. You know, at the end, you let them come back, but eventually, um, on the two-point conversion, you stuff them, and you won the game. And then the Eagles, you know, just a terrible, terrible first half, uh, made a big comeback in the second half, but it didn't matter. Anyways, Carson Wentz, there for 213 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. He folded up with 49 rushing yards and a touchdown. Uh, Carson Wentz may not be the problem because he's just given, like, everyone around him is terrible, and he's trying to make it work, and, you know, he did well at the end, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, Miles Sanders ran for 118 yards, but he is injured. On terms of receiving, Travis Fulgham was the leader with six receptions for 75 yards and a touchdown, followed by Jim Hightower, one reception for 50 yards. Zach Ertz had four receptions, 33 yards, and he is out with an injury this week. He's out for like the next three to four weeks. So that's a big, big loss for you guys. Uh, in terms of your defense, you know, it's the Ravens. You know, I was expecting that you would have some trouble with them, and I was right. Uh, but anyways, uh, Philly is favored to win this matchup. But this match is so bad. I'm just going to say it. Philly wins and covers. covers. And now you have our very next matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Atlanta Falcons. Starting out with the Lions. You beat the Jaguars. So what? 34-16. to 16, I, I was expecting you to beat the Jaguars. They're just terrible. Anyways, Matthew Stafford threw for 223 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Include, and one of his passes was a nice little like like frisbee pass. It was pretty good. Um, in terms of rushing, uh, your lead rusher was DeAndre Swift as he had 116 yards and two touchdowns. But Adrian, Adrian Peterson followed up with 40 yards and a touchdown. Uh, in terms of receiving, your big man was Kenny Galladay. Like, I like I know he's your number one. 105 yards. Uh, Danny Amendola had 31. And that was pretty much it. The only one to have a receiving touchdown was TJ Hawkinson as he had 17 yards and a touchdown. Anyways, uh, in terms of your defense, ha did a good job smothering the rush. A little bit of trouble with the pass, but that's okay. And then the Falcons, I told you, with Dan Quinn, he was holding you back of your potential. And I was right that you were going to upset the Vikings. Uh, Matt Ryan, 371 yards, four touchdowns, and no picks. I don't know why you would want to ship him out unless you're getting a couple of first-round draft picks from him. Todd Gurley couldn't quite do what he did against Carolina as he only had 47 yards for rushing. But receiving, Julio Jones is back. Eight receptions, 137 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, followed by Robert Gage with four receptions, 65 yards. Then Calvin Ridley with 61 yards and a touchdown. And then Hayden Hurst with 57 yards and a touchdown. See, uh, like I said, once Dan Quinn's gone, you're going to reach your full potential. Uh, in terms of your defense, you know, you, you did a good job with the rush game. Well, they only got 32 yards out of that. Uh, you did give up 343 yards in passing, but you picked off Kirk Cousins three times, which was amazing, and they did pretty much all that damage in garbage time. So, good on you, Falcons. You're favored by two and a half to win this one. And after last week, I will say that you win and cover the spread. And now you have our very next match between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tennessee Titans. Starting out with the Steelers, I was questioned about you this season. I didn't have high hopes just because I didn't know what Big Ben would do. Turns out he's decent. Not quite what he once was before, but good enough right now. Anyways... They're for 162 yards, a touchdown, and no picks. Uh, but 
he was pretty much like the defense and the rush game basically just completely took the Steelers to victory. James Conner back to form with 101 yards and a touchdown. Um, Benny Snell Jr. also had 17 yards and a touchdown. And Chase Claypool had a rushing touchdown as well. Uh, in terms of receiving, Claypool also led with 74 yards. James Washington with 68 yards and a touchdown. That was pretty much it. Like I said, your defense held the Browns to under 250 yards in the game. You smothered their rush, and you just completely made Baker Mayfield's life a living hell. But that's expected because he's holding the Browns back of their potential. So good on you, Steelers. And then the Titans. You know, Tannehill, everyone had the question, is Tannehill the answer? Yes, he is, as he had th th 366 yards Four touchdowns and one pick, uh, but the big man himself was Derrick Henry. 22 carries, 212 yards, and two touchdowns. He also followed up with five receptions for 52 yards. One of them was just basically off a screen pass. Uh, in terms of receiving, Andy Frisker was the leader with eight receptions, 113 yards, and a touchdown. The backup tight end to Janu Smith, but like I said, Janu Smith is streaky. Uh, then Adam Humphreys, six receptions, 64 yards in the touchdown. And A.J. Brown followed up with 58 yards and two touchdowns. Now, your defense definitely is a huge liability. Last year, your defense was pretty good. But this year, it's just been a big concerning point in all these shootout games. But I do think you could maybe get some traction soon. Anyways, um, the Titans are favored by one. But I'm going to say with the Steelers, with their defense... And how bad the Titans' defense is. Like, when it comes to the defenses, Steelers are superior. So I'm going to say that the Steelers pull off this victory. And now you have our very next matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Starting out with the Browns, I had high hopes for you going up against the Steelers last week. And goddamn, did you disappoint. Baker Mayfield threw for 119 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. He was so bad that they benched him in favor of Case Keenum. Yeah, Case Keenum, That's it's not going to get much better for you. Uh, in terms of rushing, uh, you guys were completely limited. Uh, Kareem Hunt only had 40 yards, and that was pretty much it. Um, in terms of receiving, your leader was Austin Hooper with 52 yards, followed by Jarvis Landry with 40 yards, and then Odell Beckham Jr. with 25. And that pretty much sums it up. Uh, your defense just kind of fell apart to the rush game of the Steelers. Did okay with the pass game, but, you know... You did nothing on offense, so doesn't mean much. And then the Bengals, I thought maybe, just maybe, you could pull out a huge upset. You did not. Joe Burrow threw for 313 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. You guys got off to an, a great early lead, and you blew it. Anyways, Joe Mixon ran for 54 yards and a touchdown. Um, Tyler Boyd had only one rush for 25 yards, which is pretty good. The only other rushing touchdowns went to Giovanni Bernard and Joe Burrow. On terms of receiving, it turns out T. Higgins is Burrow's current favorite target as he had six receptions and 125 yards. A.J. Green was finally showing flashes of success as he had 96 receiving yards. Uh, Tyler Boyd, uh, five receptions for 54 yards. That was pretty much it. Um, you know, your defense, you know, did a decent job with the rush game, but, like, the Colts don't execute enough of a rush game, which I think is a bad idea. But you fell apart to their passing game. Nothing else could be said. Anyways, um, the Browns are favored by three to win this one. But you know what? I'm going to say that Baker Mayfield is once again going to hold back the Browns of their full potential. So the Bengals are going to win this one. And now you have our very next match between the Carolina Panthers and my boys in the New Orleans Saints. Starting out with the Panthers. Man... I guess it, I picked the wrong time to hop on, like, the train of belief for you. Because you guys completely just did not show up. But the narrative of this game is the return of Teddy Bridgewater. Do I love him? Yes. Even though he's a Panther? Yes. I still love Teddy Bridgewater. Even though last week he was absolutely terrible with 216 yards, no touchdowns, and two picks. Uh, Mike Davis only had 52 yards and a touchdown. But that's what happens when you're not going up against, like, a paper soft uh, defense like the Falcons. Uh, but in terms of receiving, your leader was DJ Moore with 93 yards, followed by Robbie Anderson with 77. And that was pretty much it. You know, your defense, you know, it was the Bears. You know, you only gave up about 250 yards, but ultimately your offense being unable to produce anything was the reason why you lost. And then the Saints, I already talked about this in week five, but we got lucky. Like, we probably shouldn't have won that game, but we won it anyways. Like I said, Drew Brees... Uh, threw for 325 yards, one touchdown, one pick. He did kind of go back to throwing like more short passes, but he did do a few long passes here and there, including a big 41-yard pass to Jared Cook for a touchdown. On terms of rushing, uh, we got to let Kamara eat more. 
And it, we, we got to because Michael Thomas isn't coming back this week due to a quad injury, no, hamstring injury, and Emmanuel Sanders got ruled out. He's on, like, the COVID-19 reserve. So for God's sakes. Uh, but, you know, receiving did well against the Chargers, but now we're going up against the Panthers. They're like a young, hungry defense. You know, they're a team on the rise. Like, I don't expect much out of them, but I think they have a lot of potential. Back to the Saints defense did okay with the rush game, but our secondary was just getting torched. Hopefully the bye week was able to fix all our defensive problems. Saints are favored by 7.5 to win this one, and of course I'm going to say that we win and cover the spread just because we want to beat you, Stelic. I know you're watching this video. Come the, come the fuck at me, man. I'm winning this one. Saints win and cover the spread. And now you have our very next match between the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. Starting out with the Bills, a Monday night game against the Chiefs in rain. And Josh Allen still played like a rookie as he had 122 yards, two touchdowns and a pick, barely getting over 50% in completion percentage. Uh, in terms of rushing, he was the leader again with 42 yards, kind of relying more on kind of like running on the ground or like the ground attack of him instead of, you know, being more of a passer. Singletary only had 32 yards. On terms of receiving, it was not much as it was Stephon Diggs, like I said, number one guy, 46 yards and a touchdown, and Cole Beasley with 45 yards and a touchdown. Uh, you know, your defense, you know, you held Patrick Mahomes to only 225 yards, which is pretty good, but then came in Klein Edwards-Hilaire and everyone else as you gave up over 245 rushing yards. So I definitely saw a bit of a turn on the defense in terms of the secondary, definitely not as much on the rush, so if you can fix that, you can be pretty good. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then the Jets... I didn't expect much. You got Joe Flacco. I don't even know if Darnold's starting again. But anyways, Flacco threw for 186 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. Frank Gore had to be the new number one running back, and he had 46 rushing yards. Uh, in terms of receiving, your leaders were Brashad Perriman with 62 yards and Jamison Crowder with 48 yards. Defense, you know, had a little had trouble with uh, the Dolphins. Uh, you know, you did pick off Fitzpatrick two times, including a buttception, you know, the best butt play that you've had since the butt fumble. Just kidding, nothing gets better than the butt fumble. But, you know, then Tua came in for the end and finished that off. And, yes, the Dolphins are on their bye week this week, but Tua Tagovailoa is going to be a starter in the NFL, which is pretty interesting. And I actually pronounced that right, which is also a miracle. Anyways, the Bills are favored by 10.5 to win this one. And for Josh Allen, this is just going to be like a good game, just to, you know, get his confidence back up. So, Bills win. And cover the spread, which is 10.5 if I didn't say so. And now you have our very next matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington football team. A good rivalry. Dallas versus Washington. This was this was a great rivalry, rivalry back in the day, but right now it's kind of like dominated by the Cowboys. Anyways, uh, against the Cardinals, you guys were flat. Andy Dalton threw for 266 yards, one touchdown and two picks, but that one Touchdown wasn't garbage time. I mean, you did get screwed over by refs in terms of, like, P.I. calls. But it didn't help because Ezekiel Elliott only had 49 rushing yards and he had two fumbles. You can't be doing that. Uh, in terms of receiving, your lead guy was Mari Cooper with 79 yards and a touchdown, followed by CeeDee Lamb with 64 yards and a touchdown. I knew your defense just fell apart to the ground game. And a little bit of Kyler Murray. I mean, you did. he did have under 50% completion percentage, but you gave up over 261 rushing yards and 188 passing yards. So you did well with the pass, not so well with the rush. And then the football team, uh, you know, you didn't really do much. Like, you had basically the second quarter and then the fourth quarter at the end. Anyways, Kyle Allen, I don't even know if he's the answer, but he threw for 280 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Uh, in terms of rushing, your leader was J.D. McKissick with 41 yards, followed by Antonio Gibson with 30 yards. Lead receiver, like I said, it's still Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin is like the only sense of life on this team as he had 74 yards, Inman had 45, McKissick had 43, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the only reason you lost is when you scored the touchdown, you were down by one, but Riverboat Ron, or Ron Rivera, always goes for that ballsy decision to go for two, and trusting Kyle Allen with a two-point conversion is a terrible idea. It failed, of course. Um, but anyways, currently there is no favorite to win this game. So you know what? I'm just going to go here and say extreme upset alert. The Washington football team pulls out a victory in this game. And now you have our very next match between the Green Bay Packers and the Houston Texans. Starting out with the Packers. God damn it, you were such a disappointment last week. Felt lost to the Buccaneers 38-10. to Like, I expected you to win. Like, if the Buccaneers were to win, I was expecting it to be a close game. Oh my god. It was not. Aaron Rodgers... 
was terrible through for 160 yards, no touchdowns and two picks. Your rushing was absolutely inexistent. You know, Jamal Williams led with 34 yards, followed by A.J. Dillon with 31 yards, and that was pretty much it. Uh, in terms of receiving, Devontae Adams was back and only had 61 yards, uh, followed by Marquez Valdez-Scantling with 32 yards. Uh, you know, like I said, Aaron Rodgers, like I said before, he hadn't thrown a pick all season, threw two picks. One was his fault, the pick six, that was on him, and the other pick, your, your, the receiver, you gotta catch that. But your defense just completely fell apart to the Buccaneers. And that's pretty much it. And then the Texans, you know, with a new head coach, I thought you could be turning in the right direction. And you were close. But close is not there. Anyways, Deshaun Watson still proving that he has hope. Uh, he, he's literally the life for this team. 335 yards, four touchdowns, and no picks. Uh, David Johnson only had 57 yards and a touchdown. Like, he's okay, but not worth trading a second round, but not worth DeAndre Hopkins. Anyways, but in terms of receiving, Will Fuller, like I said, when he's healthy, he's dangerous. 123 yards, a touchdown. Uh, Darren Fells followed up with 85 yards and a touchdown, followed by Brandon Cooks, 68 yards and a touchdown. But your defense was just absolutely inexistent in overtime on the final drive. Like, your defense just was awful. And I expected that out of you. Anyways, the Packers are favored by three to win this one, and I'm just going to say they're just going to take an easy victory right here. Packers win and cover this And way. now you have our very first 4 o'clock matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Las Vegas Raiders. Rematch of Super Bowl 37. Starting out with the Bucs, you guys maybe pulled out one of the bigger upsets of the week. Now, of course, beating the Packers, I thought that was definitely possible. But beating them 38-10, to 10, nobody saw that coming. Anyways, Tom Brady threw for 166 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, but he didn't really have to do anything as the defense just completely silenced the Packers. But in terms of rushing, uh, Ronald Jones ran for 113 yards and two touchdowns, pretty good. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, I said he he said he was just out here to block, but he did so much more than that as he had 78 receiving yards and a touchdown. Chris Godwin followed up with 48 yards and no touchdowns, and that was pretty much it. Uh, but like I said, the defense was the main highlight of the day, just completely silencing the Packers, uh, limiting them to uh, about 250 yards. So against a hot Packers team like that, it's pretty damn good. And then the Raiders, you came off your bye week, but in week five, you pulled out one of the bigger upsets, upsetting the Chiefs. Anyways, Derek Carr is the answer. 347 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. But that's okay, as he still led them to a victory. Josh Jacobs ran for 77 yards and two touchdowns, followed by a Booker with 62 yards. On uh, terms of receiving, Henry Ruggs was the leader, as he had 118 yards and a touchdown, followed by Nelson Aguilar, who can finally catch, with 67 yards and a touchdown, and then Darren Waller, 48 yards and a touchdown. That was pretty much it. You know, had a little bit of trouble with defense because it is the Chiefs, but that one pick that you got off him was the turning point of the game. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, currently, and the unfortunate thing for you this game is that many of your starting O-linemen are going to go down, so Derek Carr's just going to be left out to die. So, Bucks are favored by three and a half. I say they win and cover the spread. And now you have our very next match between the New England Patriots and the San Francisco 49ers. This could have been originally if Brady stayed with New England. Uh, Garoppolo versus Brady. But it isn't. It's Newton versus Garoppolo. Not as good, but still pretty good. Anyways, Cam Newton against the Broncos was absolutely terrible. Threw for 157 yards, no touchdowns, and two picks. But he did rush for 76 yards and a touchdown as he fell up short to the Denver Broncos, 18-12. to 12. Uh, But in terms of receiving, uh, James White was the leader with 65 yards. Kind of doing like what he usually does, you know. Like if Brady ever needed like a short check down to a running back, James White was the guy. Uh, in terms of receiving, you know, Bird and Izzo both combined for, both had 38 yards. And that was pretty much it. Uh, you know, your defense did a decent job. You know, you didn't allow any touchdowns, but you lost by six field goals, six consecutive field goals made by Brandon McManus. As, yeah, he basically just carried the Broncos to a victory. Uh, and then the 49ers, um, I was right. I told y'all that Jimmy Garoppolo would have a nice return, and he did. 268 yards, three touchdowns, and no picks. In terms of rushing, Raheem Mostert went... Only had 65 yards, but is down with an injury. So Jarek McKinnon's going to be back up there. Anyways, but the lead receiver was George Kittle, 109 yards and a touchdown, followed by Debo Samuel with 66 receiving yards 
and a touchdown. Kendrick Bourne had 44 yards and a, and but and no touchdowns. The only one, oh, the, the only other one to have a touchdown was Brandon Ayuk with 12 reception with 12 receiving yards and a touchdown. You know your defense did a good job with the Rams for a while. Gave up about 300 yards, but you know. The only points they really scored were in garbage time. Like, the last touchdown was a garbage time touchdown. But other than that, you guys did a great job against them. Anyways, the Patriots are favored by 2.5 to win this one. But I'm going to say that the 49ers once again pull out another upset, despite being battered to hell and back. Because after what the Patriots did against that banged-up Broncos squad, I got no trust in them. So San Francisco wins this one. And now you have our very next matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Denver Broncos. Chiefs against the Bills. Well, you did well. Beat them 26-17. Patrick Mahomes only threw for 225 yards, so definitely had a little bit of trouble against this Buffalo defense, but he was carried by the rushing game, especially from Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, as he had 161 rushing yards. Uh, Patrick Mahomes himself only had, had 36 yards. Daryl Williams, two, 26 rushing yards and a touchdown. Like, you had 245 rushing yards. That's insane. And anyways... Um, Daryl Daryl Robertson was the leader with 69 receiving yards, has 69. But the big man was Travis Kelsey as he had 65 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, and that was pretty much it. No one else really did much on receiving. You know, your defense, you know, made Josh Allen look like a rookie again. So all is good there. And then the Broncos, I mean, you won, but it wasn't that good of a win. Drew Locke made his return through for 189 yards, no touchdowns, and two crucial picks at the end. Uh, Philip Lindsay, you know, no Melvin Gordon. Philip Lindsay is a good running back, and I wish they would give him more time because I'd say I would take him over Gordon right now as he had 101 yards. Uh, Tim Patrick led in receiving with 101 yards, um, and Jerry Judy couldn't really recover, only had 32 yards. Uh, your defense uh, did well against the Patriots. You know, Cam Newton was absolutely limited, could do absolutely nothing as you picked them off twice, so you did a good job against the Patriots on defense. Anyways, uh, the favorite to win this one is clearly the Chiefs by nine, and I'm just going to say straight up, yeah, they win and cover the spread. And now you have our final four o'clock matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the LA Chargers. Starting out with the Jags, uh, going up against the Lions, I expect you to lose, and you did. Uh, Gardner Minshew threw for 243 yards, one touchdown, and one pick. Uh, in terms of rushing, you got absolutely nothing uh, as James Robinson only had 29 rushing yards. Uh, in terms of receiving, Keenan Cole Sr. was the leader with 143 yards, followed by DJ Chark with 45 yards, and James Robinson with 24. And that was pretty much it. You know, your defense had a little bit of trouble with the passing game, but a lot of trouble with the rushing game, especially with DeAndre Swift, as he kind of just ran over that defense and ran away with the victory. And then the Chargers, you had your bye last week, faced off against the Saints and in Week 5, and... You did a great job. You deserved to win, but sadly, you didn't. Justin Herbert proving that maybe he was a good pick at number six. There for 264 yards, four touchdowns, and no picks. Uh, in terms of rushing, Justin Jackson and Kelly ran for combined 100 yards. No touchdowns, but the big damage was done by Mike Williams with five receptions, 109 yards, and two touchdowns. Followed by Guyton with 49 yards, Keenan Allen with 29 yards and a touchdown, and Hunter Henry with 23 yards and a touchdown. So, the issue was the defense. Yes, the Saints definitely did not go with as much of a ground attack as we relied on the pass a little bit more. Your defense just fell apart to that. Uh, you know, your defense fell apart in the final drive against the Saints in the fourth quarter. Overtime, you know, you got the stop just to force them to kick the field goal, but the Saints secondary finally shut you down. Thank freaking God. And the Jackson, I mean, sorry, the Chargers are favored by 7.5 to win this one. I'm going to say they win, but don't cup the spread and now you have our sunday night football matchup between the seattle seahawks and the arizona cardinals starting out with the seahawks um you know you were on your bye last week but against the vikings you were absolutely nothing until the second half russell wilson threw for 217 yards three touchdowns and one pick on terms of rushing he led with 58 yards followed by chris carson with 52 yards and a touchdown uh, but receiving dk metcalf is the guy 93 yards and two touchdowns. You know, a lot of teams passed up on him, but the only issue that he had at the Combine was his cone drills. So, obviously, root running was a possible issue. Uh, but follow that up with Tyler Lockett with 44 yards and no touchdowns. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, your defense uh, fell apart to the rushing game. 
of the um, Vikings and the receiving game, but your defense has been pretty bad all year, but is always able to get that big clutch stop. And that's pretty much it. And then the Cardinals, like you, you beat the Viking, you beat the Cowboys, and I expected you to. Uh, Kyler Murray, the passing was terrible, under 50% completion percentage, 188 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, but Kenyon Drake proving that he's the number one running back, 164 yards and two touchdowns. Kyler Murray did also run for four, 74 yards and a touchdown. On terms of receiving, the big man was Christian Kirk with 86 yards and two touchdowns, followed by. DeAndre Hopkins with 73 yards and no touchdowns, followed by Larry Fitzgerald. 22 yards, nothing. Uh, you know, your defense did a good job against the Cowboys, forced two Zeke fumbles, uh, did a good job against the passing attack, got a couple of picks, a couple of controversial P.I. calls that, should, that you should have got, but you pulled out the victory anyways. So, currently, the Seahawks are favored by 3.5 to win this one, and I do say that they win and cover the spread. But if the Cardinals can pull off this victory, that's going to be a statement victory. But still, Seahawks win and cover the spread. And now you have our final matchup, the Monday night matchup between the Chicago Bears and the LA Rams. For some reason, when these two teams go up against each other, it is always a terrible, terrible football game. Anyways, though, the Bears... Um, you're 5-1, I don't know how, because like Nick Foles is just a slightly better QB than Trubisky, I guess. Anyways, Foles threw for 198 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Uh, in terms of rushing, your leader was David Montgomery with 58 yards. You fed him a lot, but was unable to do much. But he, uh, he followed up with 39 receiving yards. Uh, but the big receiver was Allen Robinson with 53 yards and no touchdowns. Followed by Mooney with 36 yards, Jimmy Graham with 34 yards. So, the thing I see with Foles is that he spreads the ball around a lot. Uh, but the big highlight, of course, is your defense. Your defense is still very good. And the thing is, like I said, if your offense is just functional, you're going to win games. But you're, the, these are way too close. I need to see a convincing victory. And then the Rams, you know... You were expected to steamroll over this 49er squad, but you didn't. Uh, Jared Goff threw for 198 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Uh, was not good. He had only one touchdown in garbage time. And other than that, he was just nothing against a completely battered 49er squad. Uh, Daryl Henderson ran for 88 yards, and he was the lead rusher. Uh, in terms of receiving, uh, Tyler Higby was the man with 56 yards, followed by Josh Reynolds with 45 yards and a touchdown, and Robert Woods with 29 yards and a touchdown. Uh, your defense had a hard time with the 49ers, but you fell, you fell apart to Kittle, Debo Samuel, and Raheem Mostert. Not the worst trio to fall apart to, but Jimmy Garoppolo definitely did much better considering how bad he did against the Dolphins. Uh, but anyways, the Rams are favored by six to win this one, but of course I'm going to say that the Bears pull out this victory as they go on the road to 6-1. and one. That is going to wrap up my video for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to see all of my other prediction videos and my Saints recaps, links to all that will be in the description below. Uh, if you like this video, drop a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, share, the, share this with all your friends if you can. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you can spread it to at least one person, it would mean, a, it would mean the world to me. It, it means a lot when you guys support my videos, you know, dropping likes, subscribing, comment down below who you have winning this week, who's your upset of the week, who's your lock of the week. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok at Suit of the Savage. I've been uploading a little bit more to TikToks and dances, which I'm still terrible at, but definitely go check that out. Uh, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Houdet Nation is 